Hello everybody, welcome back to controlling the PBT playlist. In this video we will perform the optimization of the PID controller with anti-wind up. If we remind the control design workflow we have come up with in the last video, the optimization is the second step. So the starting point of the optimization is the preliminary controller we obtained in the first step. And at the end we will obtain an optimized controller. As we mentioned in the last video, the perfect candidate to be used as plant model is the nonlinear model. This is because it is accurate enough and it runs fast, which is an extremely important characteristic in an iterative process such as an optimization. It is also important to notice that, differently from what we have done in the first step of the control design workflow, here the saturations will be taken into account in our optimization process. Now let's start talking about how to implement this optimization. Optimization can be seen as a minimization problem. We aim at minimizing a cost function acting on some variables. Moreover, it is important to notice that with the BBT model we are using, the dynamics of the ball in the x and y directions are decoupled. This means that we can optimize the x and y direction controllers independently. In this video, we will focus more on the y direction, but whatever we do for the y direction can be easily repeated for the x one. In literature, there are a lot of optimization algorithms. The one we are going to use is the Bobby QA one, which can be implemented through this built-in activate block. The Bobby Coy algorithm is a derivative free and bound optimization algorithm used to solve nonlinear minimization problems. It belongs to the category of trust region algorithms. In order to run the optimization, there are some parameters which has to be defined. Of course, the variables upper and lower bounds, the trust region initial and final value. The initial value doesn't have to be too small so that at the beginning of the optimization, the optimizer has some freedom to evaluate different solutions and not get stuck into local minima, while the final value will determine the optimizer accuracy. Then we have to define the number of the interpolation conditions that will determine the number of points used for the quadratic approximation. A good choice is to set it to minus one which means we use the default activate value. And finally, we have also to set the maximum number of iterations. If the optimizer does not converge, we can try to increase this number. Now we can move to the cost function, which is the function that has to be minimized. So let's consider the step response of the BBT. Ideally, we would like that the ball perfectly follows the reference so that these two curves are overlapped. Of course, we cannot achieve that, but we would like to get as close as possible. And to do that, we have to minimize the difference between the reference position and the actual position of the ball at every time instant. This is a good starting point to define our cost function. Also, we want that both positive errors and negative errors make the cost function increase. A way to achieve it is to square this difference. Then. Let's assume that we want to give a different way to positive and negative errors. For example, we want to penalize more negative errors, which means we want to minimize the overshooting as much as possible. We can do that introducing penalty factors. Accordingly to what we have just said, we use a greater penalty factor for negative errors. Finally, we want our cost function to be a scalar quantity. So we can sum up all what we have computed so far for every time instant. To do that, we just have to compute the integral. And this is the cost function we are going to use. The optimizer will act on some variables in order to minimize the cost function. Let's see which are these variables. The PID controller with anti wind up is defined by the controller gain, the integral and derivative and constants, and the back calculation gain. For this optimization, we set the controller and the back calculation gain to fixed constant values, respectively 10 and 1, while we ask the optimizer to optimally tune the integral and derivative time constant, which therefore 
are our optimization variables. Now we are ready to perform the optimization in Activate. As mentioned before, I'm going to show you just the optimization on the Y direction. Let's open the Activate model. So the mechanical system model we are using is the nonlinear one. If we look at the controller, we see the PID with anti wind up. Moreover, here we are computing the error which is used in the cost function. And now let's focus on the Bobby QA block. This block is the one which is driving the optimization. Every 5 seconds it launches an active simulation, which represents one iteration of the optimization process. So let's see what happens at each iteration. The cost function gets computed. Here we can recognize the formula we have written before. So we square the error, we multiply by penalty factors depending on the error sign, and we integrate it. We also plot it so that we can appreciate if it is decreasing along the optimization. Moreover, at each iteration the optimization variables read from the base are updated accordingly to Bobby QA algorithm and sent back to the base to be used in the next iteration. And the initial value of these variables can be found in the initialization tab. These values are the one we have found in our preliminary controller design. Before running the optimization, let's have a quick look at the parameters we have chosen for our optimizer. We have set our variables bounds, we have set the initial and final value for the trust region. As you can see, the initial value is not that small. And we have used default values for the number of interpolation conditions and the number of iterations. Now we are ready to run the optimization. We can see that after some initial oscillations, the cost function start to decrease until convergence. And at the same time, we can see that the BBT step response is improving and overshooting disappears. We can see that the optimizer has converged because it stopped before reaching the maximum number of iterations set to 50. And these ones are the optimized integral and derivative time constants of our controller. Now, before deploying our optimized controller on the real BBT, let's compare it with the preliminary one. To do that, let's leverage the most accurate plant model we have, which is the Matibadi one. Here, we are leveraging co-simulation. This controller is the preliminary one. Instead, this one is the optimized one. All gains are defined in the initialization tab and as input we are giving a step reference in the y direction. Let's run it. Here the co-simulation is setting up and now the simulation is running. We can see that the plant with the optimized controller is performing way better. It has almost no ripples and no overshooting. We have virtually validated our controller so we can deploy it on the real hardware. This time, as input, we are giving a step both in X and Y direction. In the initialization tab, there are the optimized gains. We have obtained together the optimized gains for the Y direction, and if we repeat the same procedure for the X direction, you should come up with these values. Let's run it. We can see that we have obtained great performances both in X and Y direction. The system is fast and it doesn't show any overshooting. The unwanted effect of the integral wind up magnified by saturation has been completely removed. We have achieved that through an optimized PID controller with anti wind up. At this point you might ask, could we further improve our BBT system performances? I encourage you to watch the next video. That's it for this video. If you would like to deepen your knowledge about system dynamics and controls, please visit the first link. Moreover, feel free to share any question you might have about Compose and Activate in the Model Based Development Forum. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.